Tonight, resign. That's the message from President Trump to freshman Congresswoman Ilhan Omar for a series of tweets widely perceived as anti-Semitic by Democrats and Republicans alike. Anti-Semitism has no place in the United States Congress. What she said is so deep-seated in her heart that her lame apology, and that's what it was, it was lame, and she didn't mean a word of it, uh, was just not appropriate. I think she should resign from Congress, frankly. But at a minimum, she shouldn't be on committees. Okay, Omar created a firestorm when she suggested politicians who supported Israel were motivated by money. Uh, the operative tweet was, it's all about the Benjamins, baby. Out front now, Keith Boykin, former Clinton White House aide, and Scott Jennings, former senior advisor to Mitch McConnell and former special assistant to President George W. Bush. So, Keith, the president is calling on Omar to resign, uh, even after she obviously gave an unequivocal apology. Hypocritical or not? <laughs> Yes, of course it's hypocritical. I mean, Donald Trump himself has a history of anti-Semitism he's never apologized with. Go back to 1991, he's quoted in a book or saying he doesn't want black guys counting his money, he wants short guys with yarmulkes. Back in 2015, yeah. he speaks to the Republican Jewish Coalition. He says he doesn't need their money, and so they probably won't support him. In 2016, he, he does a tweet where he, he talks about uh, uh, Hillary Clinton says uh, has a Star of David on the pile of cash. In 2017, after the, the Charlottesville incident, where Nazis are marching and saying Jews will not replace us, Trump says that there are good people on both sides. Then last year, in 2018, when the Tree of Life synagogue massacre takes place, Trump blames the synagogue for not having armed guards there. Then, to, to top all of that, just last month, Donald Trump quotes a tweet supporting and embracing Pat Buchanan, a man who had previously called a Hitler lover and an anti-Semite. Okay. Donald Trump is the one who needs to apologize and resign. So I want, Scott, to, to, the, to what um, Keith just said. Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is jumping into the fight, and her point is, uh, unlike the president, uh, Congresswoman Ilhan demonstrated a capacity to acknowledge and apologize, right? Which she obviously did. Um, you know, the president said it was lame and she didn't meet it. But uh, if he has such an issue and thinks that it is deep-seated in someone's heart if they make a comment about Jews and money, then, well, let's play him. I know why you're not going to support me. And, you know, you're not going to support me because I don't want your money. But that's okay. You want to control your own politician. How is that any different, Scott? Yeah, I recall President Trump back then telling a lot of donors that I know I'll never get your support because, you know, you're going to want to donate to other candidates and that's fine. He OK, said that, that was all at the, the Republican it, Jewish coalition where he yeah, was speaking. And he, and he, you can't, you can't I, act know, like that's not know, relevant, Scott. Well, I'm saying that I think he said that to a number of different Republican donor groups. Look, I don't agree that the pre with the president that she should resign. I tend to think elections should be respected and voters should make those decisions. I do agree with him that just like Steve King, she ought to come off her committee, especially the House Foreign Affairs Committee. I think that is absolutely the right answer. But I think, you know, it's, it's, it's normal in politics these days for all of us to call for everyone's resignation every day. I think voters should make those decisions. But internally in the House, I think the committee issue is the right one. All right. The president has been called out before for anti-Semitic things like that. And he responds by saying, oh, but I have Jewish family members. Here he is. My daughter Ivanka is about to have a beautiful Jewish baby. I have a son-in-law who's Jewish. Jared is a great guy. As far as uh, people, Jewish people, so many friends, a daughter who happens to be here right now. Anybody want to jump in here? Yeah, that's like saying some of my friends are black, so I can't be racist. That's a ridiculous yeah. defense for Donald Trump. We know that in 2017, after he took office, according to the ADL, anti-Semitic incidents increased by 60 percent that year. Just a few months ago, we had an attack here at CNN and a few other places by Cesar Sayak, who was uh, motivated by anti-Semitic bias, in part stirred up by Donald Trump's hatred of George Soros and this fear that Soros was funding this caravan of of immigrants coming to the United States. Donald Trump is responsible in large part for contributing to this atmosphere of hatred and division in our country. And he's the last person who needs to be lecturing anyone about it. So, Scott, you know, to this point, when, when racism comes up and, and these, obviously, when it came to Charlottesville, the, 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 the two, uh, racism and anti-Semitism were intertwined. Uh, let me just play a few examples of things the president has said. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were 
very fine people on both sides. They call her Pocahontas, and that's an insult to Pocahontas. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Look at my African-American over here. Negotiating with, with Japan, negotiating with China, they say, we want deal. Scott, can he really attack Omar and say that, that, that as he did, right, that, that she, her apology is lame, she didn't mean it, and it's deep-seated in her heart when that's his track record? Yeah, look, the president does not have a perfect track record on these issues. And my views on Charlottesville specifically are well-known and well-aired on this network. It was the darkest moment of this presidency. But that doesn't mean we can't have a reasonable conversation about a member of the House Democratic majority. She didn't just invent this by accident. She has had anti-Semitic language associated with her since 2012. And I know we're going to play whataboutism with Donald Trump, and that's fine. And you can pull a lot of stuff out. You have done that. But the reality is... The Republicans just dealt with a very similar situation by taking someone off committees. The fact that they're unwilling to do that, the congresswoman you just interviewed wouldn't even use her name, wouldn't even use well, her name. Well, that's a lot like Steve King and the Republicans. But, but look, if he's saying she they should took resign him off the because committee. she they makes took a tweet off about Benjamin Steve. Scott, then how should he not resign for saying that Republican Jewish donors buy I off their said, candidates? I don't think what anyone, is the difference? I don't think anyone should resign. I don't think anyone should okay. resign. I think she should be treated very similarly to Kansas. Last my night, view. you said she should resign from the Foreign Affairs no, Committee. No, I said no. I did. I said she should come off her committee, which is that's, exactly what that's, I'm that's saying. That's a tonight. resignation. She should come off her committee. That's a resignation. But you know, Donald Trump has a history what? of doing this stuff. You can't. <laughs> Steve King, for example, has been in office since 2003. He's a 69 year old man. Elon Omar has been in office since last month. She's just getting started. She apologized immediately. Yes, yes, unlike, I know. She just un- learned about anti semitism. She just learned about anti semitism as a thing. She well, well, how, well, what's sure. Donald Trump's excuse for learning about anti-Semitism and tweeting anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic posts repeatedly? His Look, last if you campaign. Want defend, if you want Donald to defend Trump's the anti-Semites last, in your, in your party, Trump's go ahead. If you want to defend the anti-Semites, go ahead. I don't think it's a good look right? for your party. Donald Keith, Trump, I mean, she would be. She's taken on the, the Gaza issue. She, she's not clueless about anti-Semitism. Yeah, and, and the money. And, and, no, and nobody, that's not and, an and nobody that ever, nobody ever said she was. Yeah. My, my point, though, is that the Democrats are holding our own accountable. Republicans, they have How? one example. How? One what, example what with Steve King. What it took them 20 years to say anything about, and they're going to parade that for the next 20 years. But they haven't done anything about Joe Arpaio, who Donald Trump pardoned. They haven't done anything about Cindy Hyde Smith, who was com- talking about lynchings and how she wanted to go to lynchings. They didn't talk. They didn't say anything about Ron DeSantis and his monkey business stuff. They didn't say anything about Donald Trump and his racist birtherism, but it's all about one person, a freshman representative from Congress who happens to be Muslim. That's the one they want to attack, and it's blatant hypocrisy on the part of the Republican Party. Yeah, because she happens to be the one who's expressing anti-Semitic views today. That's why she's in the news, and that's why we're talking about her. She's hardly the only one in the conference that she has done this. Clay has her issues. When, when was the last time Donald Trump has apologized? had brushes with this. When was the last time this Donald is, Trump apologized? This is apologized. outrageous. I can't well, believe the Democrats are going the to the mat to defend this anti-Semitic member. Nobody's going to the mat to defend anything. Play, go ahead. We're, to, we're, we're asking for the Republicans well, to have consistency. Yes, you are. Maybe Nobody, you said you the apology was lame and she didn't mean anti-Semitism it. Anti-Semitism if you will only do it when it's against another party. That's not consistency. Okay. That's hypocrisy, Scott. You right. know better. Both of you, thank you again. And next, a potential 2020.